Hey, what's up guys? It is great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is why I ramble about tech and other stuff. So for the longest time, the Samsung T5 has been the go-to portable SSD drive for many people, including creators. But is there a new sheriff in town? Let's ramble. Hold up, things go well when I pull up. They all on me like a once. The Samsung T5 has probably been the most popular portable SSD of the last couple of years. And there's a couple of good reasons for that. First of all, it's design. The T5 is a very slick looking drive that fits the same aesthetic as you would get from a company like Apple. It's tiny and super light, it comes in at 51 grams and its aluminum housing is only slightly taller and a little more narrow than a credit card, which makes it ultra portable. You can easily stick it in your pocket or keep it in a tech pouch like this one by Peak Design, along with your other tech essentials. But mostly, this drive is known for its speed and its durability. You can drop this thing a few times without fear of immediately breaking it, and more importantly, it's fast. Fast enough, in fact, to edit videos straight off the drive, so you don't have to transfer the files to your computer first, which will save you a lot of money. I work on a MacBook Pro and buying internal storage directly from Apple is crazy expensive. So using an external SSD like this means you can just buy the internal storage you absolutely need and use these SSD drives for everything else. Now, my Samsung T5 is only 500 gigabytes and occasionally I would fill up the drive so I decided to get a second one which is the SanDisk Extreme that I heard a lot of good things about as well. They cost roughly the same, we'll get to that later, and in my experience, the performance on these two drives is pretty much identical. The biggest difference is the way they look and the fact that the SanDisk has an IP55 rating, which actually makes it dust and water resistant. It has a rubbery coating, which makes it feel like it can take a beating, and also, it prevents it from sliding around on the table. And I guess the fact that they put a keychain ring in it would demonstrate exactly how sturdy it is. Just like the T5, I feel perfectly fine tossing it into my bag without giving it too much thought. The SanDisk comes with only one very short USB-C to USB-C cable, which is not always ideal. The Samsung T5 comes with two longer cables, one USB-A to USB-C and one USB-C to USB-C. And of course, it's nice to have both options. Now, I've been using and loving both drives for quite some time now and they've never failed me once until I recently invested in a new camera, which I absolutely love, but which also produces massive video files. And I started noticing that my computer would struggle whenever I was editing heavy 4K timelines straight off the drive, which is a problem because you can't really see what you're doing. So this got me interested in the new Samsung T7 drive, which is supposedly twice as fast. So let's have a look at this new drive and see what's different. So right out of the box, it looks and feels quite similar to the original T5. It is a little taller and a little wider, but also a lot thinner. And weighing 58 grams, it's only seven grams heavier than its predecessor, which is negligible. Just like the T5, it comes with two cables, USB-A and USB-C. I got the touch version, which is why you see this little square on the front, which is a fingerprint scanner. You can also buy it without the scanner and it will be a little bit cheaper, but I like the extra layer of security. Whenever the drive is being used, the square will light up with this blue light, which looks pretty cool at first, but it can be a little distracting when you keep it next to you on your desk like I do. I got the one terabyte version because of the file sizes I'm working with. When you connect the T7 to your computer, it will already contain the installation files for the companion app, which you will need to set up your password and your fingerprints. You'll have to go into the settings and from here you can change the name if you want. It'll say T7 Touch by default. Let's just call it Patrick's T7. Then you need to make sure that the security mode is toggled on. From here, you have to choose a password, even if you only want to use the fingerprint. Now, be careful because if you forget your password, you will no longer be able to change it. Once that's done, you can register your fingerprints. You will only be able to get into the drive using your password when you're on your own computer. If you want to use your password on another machine, you will have to install the app again on that machine. You can, however, use your fingerprint to open the drive on any device. 
And now for the important part, the speed test. Now, we'll be doing two speed tests. One is the Blackmagic app, which I have found to be pretty accurate. And then we will do a real life test in which we will copy the same file to all three drives to see how fast each drive will copy it. So we'll start with the Samsung T5, then the SanDisk, and then the T7. So on the Blackmagic app, you select the drive you want to test, in this case the T5, and then simply hit start. So as you can see, the T5 tops out at around 491 megabytes per second in write speed and 527 in read speed, which is not bad. Now let's do the same thing for the SanDisk. Select the drive and go. Now keep in mind that I've been working all of these drives pretty hard for this video, which will affect their performance. So this is interesting. The write speed is a lot slower at 360 and even in read, it is slightly outperformed by the T5. And now for the T7, let's see if it's really that much faster. All right, that's definitely a lot faster than the other two. 842 write speed and 892 for reading. Now, you might be wondering why it isn't reaching the 1000 megabytes per second as stated on the box. Well, that's because the T7 gets pretty hot after it's been in use for a while. And when the drive is dealing with these thermal issues, it will slow down a little but it will stay consistent and even when it's slowed down, it is still much, much faster than the other two drives. So let's see what happens when we take a file of around 26 gigs and copy the same file into each of the drives. Now let's see what happens when we take a file of around 26 gigs and copy the same file into each of these drives. For the purpose of the video, let's speed it up a bit. As you can see, it takes a minute and 10 seconds to copy the file to the Samsung T5. Now let's do the same thing for the SanDisk. You'll see that it's a little faster here than the T5, which shows that the performance varies a little bit. And now let's see if the T7 is really that much faster. Wow, 30 seconds, that's more than twice as fast. So let's talk about price. If we take the one terabyte version of each drive, the Samsung T5 currently goes for 139 bucks. The SanDisk is a tad more expensive at 149. You'll pay 159 for the non-touch T7 and 169 for the touch version. So is the T7 worth the extra 20 bucks? For me, it's a no brainer because the speed boost I get from the additional 20 bucks is very significant. If you already own a T5 or a SanDisk and you haven't run into any speed issues yet, stick with that one. If you don't own an external drive yet and you're trying to decide which one to get, I would definitely recommend getting the T7 if you can afford it, just for the purpose of being future proof. All right, guys, for more content like this, have a browse on the channel. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.